Well, hello everybody, and let us continue our discussion of naming, and today we want to get into an area called uh, organic compounds, and so we want to learn about organic compounds and organic uh, functional groups in this final section of the unit. So consider the hydrocarbon, ooh, new word, hydrocarbon, C2H6, is, th is this an alkane? an alkene or an alkyne oh, okay you guys know where we're going we need to start with some notes so let's begin with organic i said we're going to study organic compounds and so let's start here with organic compounds and let's come up with a definition of organic compounds good an organic compound is a covalently bonded substance a covalently bonded substance compound right containing carbon that's the big thing covalently compound substance containing carbon now it does exclude a couple things it exclude it excludes my carbon oxides such as CO, CO2, and my carbonates, CO3, 2 minus. So this would be a good definition of organic compounds. Some people just say, hey, organic compounds are compounds containing carbon. Covalently, mean, covalently bonded means what? That means the electrons are shared. Now, there's a specific type of, of organic that we want to talk about, and that is a hydrocarbon. So what is a hydrocarbon? Well, it is an organic compound. Organic compound, so we're talking about the definition here. It's an organic compound which contains only hydrogens and carbons. Good. So this is our hydrocarbon, and we're going to focus on hydrocarbon, hydrocarbons. And in fact, there are three that we're going to focus on. We're going to put types of hydrocarbons. And what are the three types of hydrocarbons? Extend. There we go. Three types. We have something over here called the alkanes. And then we have the al alkenes and we have the alkynes and no Detroit Tiger fans there are no alkalines good alkanes alkenes and alkynes now what's the difference between these well in an alkane we have a little definition of an alkane my definition of alkane of an alkane is a hydrocarbon in which all carbons are bonded through single bonds. So if I look at something like this, now remember each carbon needs to have four bonds, right? So now it has four bonds and will complete the four bonds like that. So this is an alkane. Why? Because the carbons are bonded by a single bond. Now an alkene, we'll go with our definition of an alkene. It is a hydrocarbon uh, in which at least two carbons are bonded through a double bond. Okay, I think I got this. So here's a carbon. Here's another carbon bonded to it. We have a double bond. Since I already have two bonds on my carbon, I can only add four hi two hydrogens each. Here's my double bond. So that would be an alkene. Keen indicates double bond. Ain indicates single bond. What do you think about an alkyne? An alkyne, you got it, folks. 
It is what? It is a hydrocarbon in which at least two carbons are bonded through what? Through a triple bond. Yeah, that is right. Hey, sometimes chemistry makes sense, right? Triple bond. And so I'd have a carbon, triple bond to another carbon. Only one hydrogen can fit on each of these now because each carbon can only have four bonds. So here is my triple bond, and we'd say this is a now kine. Good. Now, there's some interesting stuff about these. Each of these has a... There's a way for me to figure out uh, whether something is an alkane, alkene, or an alkyne, just looking at the formula. This formula is C2H6. This formula is what? C2H4. And this formula is C2H2. And the way I can figure this out is for my alkanes, well, let, me, let me write down here, let's call this the general formula general formula. What's the general formula for an alkane? Well, it's going to be C N H 2 N plus 2. See, my N here is 2, right? So 2 times 2 plus 2 equals what? 2, 4, 5, 6. And what do I have? 6. What have I had? C 3. Well, if I had C3, that means my N is 3. And so I'd go 2 times, for my H, should be 2 times N, 2 times 3, plus 2. So that's 6, 8. So that means I'd have to have C3, H8. So C3, H8 would be an alkane. So this is the way I can look at my numbers and tell right away whether I have an alkane. What about my formula for... My alkene. Whoops, whoa, went the wrong way. Here, help me, Mr. Wizard. Okay, formula, here, general formula. General formula for my alkene is simple. C-N-H-2-N. So when my C is equal to 2, I'm going to take 2 times 2, and I get 4, so that means H4. What about in this example next door here? What if I have C3? That means my N is equal to 3. That means what is my 2 times N equal to? 2 times 3 is equal to 6. That means I have C3H6. Woo! Piece of cake! And finally, we do have a general formula for my alkynes, my general formula for my alkynes would be CN H 2 N minus 2. I like the parallel here, right? Over here we had CN H 2 N plus 2, CN H 2 N and CN H 2 N minus 2. All right, so what do we have above? N is equal to 2. So that means what is 2 times 2 minus 2 equal to 2? And so I would have C2H2. What about if my C is equal to 3? I mean, if I have an N equals to 3. Well, that means 2 times 3 minus 2. 6 minus 2 is equal to 4. C3H4. So the formula for an alkyne where I have three carbons is C3H4. Yahoo! Let's go back and answer our question. I have a hydrocarbon, C2H6. Aha! So that means N equals 2, and my 2N... Oh, excuse me. I have 6, right? So how do I get 6? Well, I can have either 2N plus 2, 2N, or... 2n minus 2 equals 6. Well, we said n is equal to 2, so 2 times 2 is equal to 4, so we know it's not that one. And if I put n in equals n equals 2 here, I get what? 2 times 2 is 4, plus 2 equals 6. Hey, it is the 2n plus 2, which means it is an alkane. Good. So it is an alkane. You guys give this one a try. Unpause me when you're done. 
Well, what do we know? C is equal, I mean, N is equal to 3. And what do I have over here? 6. That looks to me like what? I have a 2N situation for my H. So when do I have a 2N for my H? C, N, H, 2, N. If I look back at my notes, C, N, 2, H, N is what? It is an alkene. So my answer here is alkene. All right. That means there's a double bond somewhere in there, right? Good. Next. Aha, now we're looking at drawing this. Okay, I can draw this. We know we have two carbons, so here's a carbon and here's a carbon. Now, what else do we know? It is C2H6, so that is what? CnH2n minus 2, right? No, 2n plus 2. Good. 2n plus 2, right? Let's make sure. n is equal to 2, so this would be 2 times 2 plus 2, that's 4, 4 plus 2 equals 6, so it's C2H6, yeah, that's what we have, C2H6, that means what? What is this format? That is an alkane, if it's an alkane, that means these are all single bonded, all my carbons are single bonded, that means I have, it yeah, would start over down here, we have lots of space, I have each carbon, there's a single bond there to it. Now, what do I need? I need to add six hydrogens. Where are they going to go? One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. So that's how we draw that. Now, how do we name the molecule? Ooh, we have to learn some more uh, rules. So let's go back to our notes. We want to come under naming. I better use a different color. We're going to come under here, alkanes and naming. And how do we name an alkane? It's pretty simple, folks. We're going to use a prefix. And we're going to use the suffix ain. Okay? That's the suffix we're going to use. Now, the prefix is going to depend upon the number of carbons. It's going to depend upon the number of carbons. If I have, here we go, number of carbons is here, and the prefix. If I have one carbon, we're going to use meth for our prefix. Not going to use the drug meth. Okay, stop chuckling out there. Number two, we're going to use F. Number three, we're going to use prop. Number four, bute. Number five, pent. Number six, hex. Seven, hept. Eight, oct. Nine, known. And ten, deck. So we're going to use these prefixes and we're going to add the suffix. What suffix are we going to add here? Ain, if it is a Alkane. Well, okay, cool. We said here already that this indeed is an alkane. That means I want to figure out the number of carbons. That's easy. I have two carbons. Two carbons. What prefix do I use? Well, the prefix I use with two carbons is right here. I'm going to use what? F. So I'm going to say this thing is called F. I'm going to add the suffix. And the suffix is ane, and so this thing is called ethane. Good. Going farther, further. Yikes. Going further. You guys do this one. Well, how did you do? First thing we want to figure out is, is this an alkane, alkene, or an alkyne? Well, I have C4. So that means N is equal to 4. And I have the subscript on H being 10. And just to check, let's always start with alkanes just to be safe. We know that for an alkane, it's CnH2n plus 2. So if this is 4, then this would be 2 times 4 plus 2. And 2 times 4 is 8 plus 2 is 10. So I should have C4H10 if it's an alkane. Well, it is. Look at that. 
So we know this is now an alkane. That means what? All my bonds between my carbons are single. So I'm going to take four carbons, one, two, three, four. I'm going to bond them all together with single bonds. And then I'm going to put hydrogens on the rest. Remember, in each car how do I know how many hydrogens? Well, they've got to, each carbon has to have four total bonds. And then we'll make sure and count. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. That is correct. So that's my beautiful picture. Now, what is the name? Well, we know it's an alkane, so we know it's going to end in ane. What prefix are we going to use? C is four. Let's go back to our notes. What prefix do we use for four? Do, 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 do. Not but, but but This is but but not but butane. So this is butane. So that's what butane looks like. Excellent. Next, here we go. Consider this C3H6 draw and name the compound. Okay, C3H6. N is equal to three and Excuse me. And my H is equal to what? 3 at 6. Oh, that's 2N. So that means I have a CNH2N. That is an alkene, right? Good. So that means what? I have at least one triple bond. So I'm going to put one triple bond in, a bond in my picture. I'm going to take a C, not triple. Sorry, folks. Ene means double bond. I'm going to put one double bond in here. It really doesn't matter yet where we put that double bond. I have to have three carbons, one, two, three. One double bond. Now, notice, this first carbon already has one, two, one, one, two bonds on it, so I'm just going to have three, four. So there's an H, and there's an H. My second carbon has one, two, three, and here's my fourth already, so it has one H on it. And my third carbon has one bond, so it's going to be one, three, four, oops, one, two, three, four. I can't count. Like that, right? You guys follow that? This first carbon already had two bonds on it, so I just add one, two. The second carbon has one, two, three bonds on it, so I only add one. And my third carbon only already had one, so I added one, two, three. Huh. Good. Now let's count my car uh, hydrogens to make sure. One, two, three, four five, six. Okay, so this is a beautiful picture. Let's clean it up. I'm going to do it this way, right? And like I said, that double bond could actually be somewhere else, maybe, but it doesn't matter where yet. Good, so this is my picture. Now, how do I name this? Well, we want to go back, take some notes. Let's go with green this time. Notes on naming Al. Alkenes. Notes of naming alkenes. Notes of naming alkenes. So how do we name an alkene? Well, we're going to use a prefix, and we're going to use a suffix, and the suffix is not ain. It is, what do you think? Ain. Hey, hey, I like this. You mean I call an alkene? I use the suffix "-een on an alkene? Absolutely. What prefix am I going to use? We're going to use those prefixes. Wow, this is simple, Mr. Smith. Absolutely, it's simple. Good. So we have three carbons. So what prefix do we use? Let's go back and check. d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d d and we're going to put an ene on it. So my name is Propene. Hey, woohoo! Let's put some hair on this guy and give him a happy eye and another happy eye and a yelling. Well, he doesn't look very happy, does he? Woohoo! Wow, in fact, he looks scary. Ikes, caramba, propene, propene. Moving on, next. C5H10, you guys do this one. Well, here we go. C5H10, what do you think this is? Well, N is equal to 5, and my H is equal to what? Well, it's 10, and it, 10 is what? 
H2N, so I have a CNH2N. When I look at CNH2N, what is CNH2N? Just as you would expect, CNH2N is an alkene. So I know this is an alkene. That means there's one double bond somewhere. You could put it anywhere you want. I'm going to put it on the first carbon. So that's one, two, three, four, five. We want to make sure all carbons have four bonds to it. So this guy needs three hydrogens added to it. This guy has one, two, three, four. This guy has one, two, three, four bonds. This guy has one, two, three already, four. And this guy has one, two, Good. And by the way, this hydrogen here, it really doesn't matter if we put it on the bottom or on the top. As long as this carbon only has one hydrogen on it, we're okay. Good. So that's one, two, three, four, five carbons. Let's count our hydrogens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hey, so we have C5H10. This is the beautiful drawing. It is an alkene, we said which means we're going to use the prefix ene, and we need a prefix, I mean a suffix ene, prefix for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we all know by now is, like that building in Washington, Pent, Pentagon, so this is a Pentene, Pentene. Great. All right, moving on. Two more slides and we'll call it a day. You guys can guess where we're going here. This is C4H6. N is equal to 4. And so H, well, it's not 2 times 4 plus 2. And it's not 2 times 4. So this is what? 2N minus 2 maybe? So I put in 2 times 4. That's 8 minus 2 is equal to 6. Okay. So that means this is a CNH 2N minus 2, meaning it is an al Alkyne. And if it's an alkyne, it has what? A triple bond somewhere. So let's place one triple bond in here somewhere. C, let's put a triple bond here. C, C, C. Four carbons. My first carbon has three bonds on it already, so that's the fourth. My second carbon has three on this side. There's three there, and there's one there, meaning it has four already, so it needs no more hydrogens. Here's a hydrogen, here's a hydrogen, and this last carbon needs three. So what do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I have four carbons and six hydrogens. Let's clean that up a little bit. Yoink, doink, 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 doink. doink. So this is what my picture looks like. That looks like a beautiful alkyne. Now, of course, I could have my triple bond in the middle if we wanted to, and that would look something more like this. Let me show you another way. So it could be like this, right? Triple bond here, and then my carbons, with this first carbon needs four. The second carbon's fine. I have three, excuse me. The second carbon's fine. The third carbon's fine, and this carbon over here would need three. So it's three six looks like c4 h6 and that would be also a perfectly acceptable drawing now how do we name this let's go back and add a few notes but you guys i think know what these notes are going to be yep naming so how do we name I better use a new color, red. How do we name an alkyne? Well, we're going to use a prefix, and we're going to use a suffix. And what's the suffix? Hey, it's ine. Just like in the word alkyne. Yes, we're just going to take the prefix and put ine on it. And what prefixes? We're going to use these prefixes. Perfect. Mr. Smith, you finally make sense. Okay, C4. We have a C4, right? C4 is what? We've already learned that. It is butte, and we're going to use the suffix ine. And so both of these guys are called butine. Now, what is really the difference between these? Well, we like to tell our audience where that triple bond is. Okay, so 
we label our carbons either left to right or right to left whichever is the gives us the lowest number um, so this is one two three four this could be one two three four right and then we tell the reader where our triple bond is by saying a number so this is on the first carbon this triple bond is and so we'd call this one bu Tine. We know it's got a triple bond on it. Why? Because it has ion. Where is that triple bond? On the first carbon. This one, the one below, would be what? Well, my carbon is one, two. My triple bond's on the second carbon, so I'd call it two butine. There we go. So that's also what we do. We want to label, we want to tell the reader where our double or triple bond is. Good. So if we go back a question, what do we want to say here? With this picture, we want to say this is a one pentene. Why? Because the double bond is on my first carbon. Great. Let's do the last one and then we'll call it quits. Well, C6H10, N is equal to 6, H is equal to 2N minus 2. 6 times 2 is 12, minus 2 is 10, yes. And that means this is an alkyne, alkyne, meaning we have a triple bond. I have six carbons, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And let's put some hydrogens around it. Here's a hydrogen, here's a hydrogen, none here, none here, and here's a hydrogen. Here's a hydrogen, and hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Now there's another way I could draw this, right? Let's do it this way. How about putting the triple bond here? Good. And carbon, carbon, carbon. I need six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Complete my hydrogens. And like this. And let me do one more just to blow your mind, okay? So let's do this way. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. So these are three ways to draw that. All of them are acceptable. How are you going to name it? Six. Well, six means what? Hex. And it's an ion. So this is a hexine. This is a hexine. And the last one is a hexine. Now the question is, where are those triple bonds? Well, this triple bond is right here. Now, like I say, we want to put that on the lowest carbon. If I number from left to right, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If I number from right to left, which I can do, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So when I look at that, in either case, my carbon is on the what? If I go from left to right, it's on the third carbon. If I go from right to left, it's on the third carbon. So we would call this three hexine. Now, let's look at the next one. One, two, three, four, five, six versus one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if I look at the blue going to left to right, my triple bond is on my fourth carbon. If I go right to left, excuse me, left to right, my triple bond is on the two carbon. So I always want to use the lowest number here, so I'd call this 2 hexine. Got it? What about the last one? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this triple bond is on the fifth carbon going left to right. What about going right to left? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Hey, if I go right to left, the triple bond is where? It's on my first carbon. So how do I want to number this? I'm going to number using the blue going right to left, and I would call this thing 1 hexine. 
Got it? All right. That'll be it for today. And, oh my gosh, long day. Sorry, folks. Bye.